Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs, where we discuss data-related topics. For today's leg of My Data Science Journey, we're going to discuss the IBM Data Science Professional Certificate that's out on Coursera. First, we're going to level set by looking at the Coursera site and see what this certificate's all about. So we're going to do a different approach this time. I wrote an article in Medium whose link I'll post in the description down below this video. I'm going to bounce around between this article you see here and the Coursera site and some other sites. So this IBM Data Science Professional Certificate that you see up here on screen is one of many stepping stones on my journey to become a data scientist. This certificate program is comprised of nine courses that we'll look at in a minute. And there's already 235,428 students who've been enrolled. And I Googled it. This site's been up around three years, maybe a little longer. So heavy usage and, and very well known and very well crafted and very well established. I noticed something that I wanted to point out that speaks to the difficulty of this certification. Here in uh, the course number one certificate, we see 235,000 enrollees. But if we go to the final ninth capstone project, there's only 67,000. So 24, roughly seven. So about a, a two thirds of the people drop off by the time they get to the end. They just don't complete it. So that gives you an idea of the level of effort. Even though it's a beginner course, by the time you get to the end, it's intermediate to perhaps even advanced. What do they say here? Yeah, they say intermediate level. This certificate program is comprised of nine courses, taking the student from the basics of data science through to creating their own unique capstone project at the end. I'm not going to go through the details. I'll leave that to you. I'll put the link to this Coursera certificate down in the description field so you can browse to it. But in a nutshell, the nine courses are what is data science, tools for data science, data science methodology, Python for data science and AI. Here's where you start getting some hands-on using the tools. Uh, database and SQL for data science. Data analysis with Python. Data visualization with Python. Machine learning with Python. And then the big one, the applied data science capstone, where you put to use and exercise all of the skills that you've learned up to that point. This certification is a great starting point for a career shift into data science. And I highly recommend it to either beginners or intermediate level folks. Beginners receive a broad overview of the fundamentals of what data science entails. Mid-level students will appreciate the capstone project for the experience gained coming up with your own project, sourcing your own data, writing your own code, as well as kickstarting your portfolio with a mandatory GitHub account, writing a research paper, and writing blog articles. Curious students wondering whether a data science career might be a good fit should work through this program because if you can make it to the end, and especially if you enjoy the last two courses, then you'll know that data science is probably a good fit. On the other hand, if you don't make it to the end, or if you don't enjoy the last two courses where you really get into the nuts and bolts of data science, then to the contrary, you'll know that uh, maybe data science isn't a good fit for you. Next, we'll discuss how much does this certification cost? According to the Coursera site, it's 39 US dollars per month as you work your way through all nine courses. Also, according to the Coursera site, this certification and all the courses are free so long as you can complete it within the seven-day window, but that's pretty unlikely. You'd have to focus 10 hours a day to try and get that done in seven days and probably even more than 10 hours a day. We'll see in a minute how long it'll actually take. Quick tip, you can certainly go into the seven-day free window with a trial and error attitude, and if it's not for you, then drop it. No harm, no foul, no money lost. Just be prepared to cancel. I have an annual subscription, so the charge was just added to my bill. I assume those without an annual subscription would be prompted at that point after seven days to enter billing info and you just say no. But I'm not sure how that works. Um, on the other hand, if you didn't pay going in and everything's working out great, then fine. You would pay at the start of seven days to continue and all would be good. Next we'll discuss how much time does it take to complete the certificate. So from the Coursera site, if we scroll down to any given course, click on the course details link, the page comes up. If we scroll down, they have a lot of details on the course, and it'll tell you approximately how many hours that given course will take. But these numbers aren't entirely accurate. You can do things like I suggest watching videos at double speed. It keeps your concentration on, and it gets you through the material a little bit faster. Your mind doesn't wander. And then the lab, sometimes you're a bit slower, sometimes you're a bit faster. So anyway, we're going to look at the total hours here is about 195 hours total if you add up all nine courses. But next we're going to look at how long it actually took me. The certificate took me 106 hours across 17 days. 
I did it with Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Day. I had three eight-hour days off, holidays. So that helped out, get it done a little bit quicker. Um, but again, according to the Coursera documentation, it takes an average person about 10 months and 195 hours, about double the 106 that I took. Uh, and for example, the capstone course takes six weeks, according to Coursera. For me, the data science course number one, five and a quarter hours, course number two, six, Course number three was a shorter course, like a half to a third of the materials, other courses, two and a half hours, four and a quarter, et cetera. These courses one through seven all took less than eight hours. So I could go through them pretty quickly. Course number eight, there's a pretty involved lab and I ran into some issues. That took quite a bit longer, 16 and a quarter hours. And then it took me 56 and a half hours on the applied data science capstone project. An important caveat about the numbers above, I just finished an intense year completing graduate degree in data science and consequently moved pretty fast through the course material labs, so adjust your expectations accordingly. Also note that for courses one through eight, I went about two to four times faster than most students, but then I dropped to two times slower than most students for the applied data capstone. And uh, this was intentional. I planned on using the capstone to kickstart my portfolio, my project portfolio, and I wanted to really understand the material and polish it off all the artifacts, the Jupyter Notebook for code, the PDF for the research paper, and the PowerPoint presentation. So I knew going in I was going to spend a lot more time on this. That's your decision what you want to do, but that's what I did and why. Next we'll discuss whether the certification is worth the time, money, and effort to obtain. And the answer is absolutely. You cover a lot of material and you get to practice your data science skills throughout the program, especially during the capstone course where you get to heavily exercise what you've learned. The capstone also requires that you start a portfolio on GitHub, something that I'd been putting off, but I'm very happy I had to complete for this project. And here's my GitHub account. Um, and it also requires, the capstone also requires that you write up a blog or do a presentation as well. So we're gonna drill down here into my GitHub projects so that you un can see what GitHub's all about if you don't already know. So I really like this. in. My GitHub project here. I have a data research labs is my repo repository and then Coursera IBM data science professional certificate is the project. In this project I have a Python, I'm sorry, a Jupyter notebook with a Python code in it. I have my report, Word document, and then I have my presentation, PowerPoint. Alternatively I could have done a blog but I just chose this because I needed to get it done faster. The three of these, I'm going to load them and show you in a minute, but I also did them in PDF format just in case there's an issue. Sometimes loading a Jupyter Notebook can be slow, but anyway, let's go look at Jupyter Notebook. I really like what those look like. It takes a little bit of time to load up here. Good. GitHub's not busy, so it loaded in fine. So there's my Jupyter Notebook, which is a nice scientific approach to getting your code and data and results and notes all lined up. So my markdown cells, tell what's going on, have a table of content, have some instructions. Here's some code cells to install components, some code cells to import the libraries, pandas, matplotlib, etc. cetera, bunch of Python code. Data acquisition layer, what I'm doing, where I'm getting the data from, all markdown uh, cells that are instructions. And then it starts to get into the nuts and bolts of it. And what's neat is from GitHub, people don't have to have Jupyter Notebook installed. GitHub will automatically preformat and run it for you. So anybody can click this link and see the Jupyter Notebook with uh, execution line 20. There's the blob of block of Python code. Here's the output where I took the head, the top five rows of that first run where I was loading in a CSV and manipulating it a little bit. Anyway, it's, it's really neat. And it was nice to get that set up because as a data scientist, it's really important to have a portfolio and show your work. I can present all kinds of stuff and nobody cares, nobody looks at it. <laughs> don't look at my resume, don't look at LinkedIn. But if I can get a portfolio with several sample projects out there, then people can look at that and it's, it's a valuable thing to have. It reminds me of what architects have always had, a portfolio of their work. So anyway, I really like GitHub and that was a neat artifact. Oh, almost forgot. I want to also show you the uh, report and the presentation. I'm not going to do these two, I'm going to do the PDFs. So the report for the project, it also renders in GitHub in a PDF viewer. So there it is. It looks just like I set it up in Word. Uh, when you're doing it, make sure you get you uh, in Google. You can search for a common commercial. What is it? Common something or other. Light. Actually, let's go do that really quick. Boom. 
pop up Google here. This is a good tangent for when you're doing papers and whatnot. So if I want a picture of Seattle, and I go to Images, and I go to Tools, and I go to Usage Rights, and I go to Creative Commons License. There we go. And typically, all of these are free, and you can use them. You can click it and go look at the details, but that's where I source my images from. So I know there's not a copyright problem. I put the link there as well. Uh, anyway, tangent. Here's my research paper with all the details. And a lot of this stuff was redundant. I copy-pasted it from my report back into my code as markdown cells in the uh, Jupyter Notebook. So that is the report. And the PowerPoint is going to be, the presentation is going to be basically the same thing, but summary level. So as a PDF, it's just slides, black background, easier on the eyes. If you need more proof whether or not this IBM Data Science cert certification is worth the time and effort, just Google it. And you will see all over the place that it's ranked in the top 8 to 15 data science certificates. So here is one, and here is one, and here is one. We'll just pop open all five of them, and then we'll go look at them. So data science certificates pay off. Wow, my machine's going slow. And if you go down, IBM, knock on it, it jumped around a bit. IBM data science, there it is right there, professional certificate. And we go to the next one. And anyway, if you scroll down, all of those, it'll be right there. And there's dozens of them if you search. So it's, uh, it's well known in the industry. And you saw earlier at the beginning of this course that there's hundreds of thousands of enrollees. So great, great program, well worth doing. Next up, we'll discuss what social media badges are awarded. Regarding social media badges, there's two different styles or types. One is directly from IBM. So what you're looking at here is course by course by course. Uh, there's six courses. Here's a seventh course. And for whatever reason, there's two courses that don't show up. But anyway, seven out of the nine individual courses, IBM has specific badges for each of the Coursera courses. And they're put out by a claim. And you can get a link. I'll just do the machine learning by Python. You can get a link. And it says it was issued by Coursera. IBM, it was issued to me on this date, etc. I can click the uh, share button. I could click on one of these and have it published. I usually don't do that. Instead, I go grab, where is it? Somewhere in here, there's a copy link. And I go grab that. Sometimes I just grab the URL up here, but usually, there, that one, URL. And so I grab, or I just hit the copy. And now I have the URL, and to try it, this is important too, because I've messed this up before. Do a in private window if it's Edge, or do a incognito if it's Chrome or whatever. That way, your credentials aren't there. This is truly what a public view would be. And sure enough, this means that anyone could see this view of it. So that is what an IBM course-specific badge looks like. Now, different from IBM, which has badges for each individual course, Coursera has a badge for the entire certificate, for the entire program. And that's the one that I tend to use and uh, put visibility towards because it's more meaningful. It represents everything. Um, it's not as pretty as the individual IBM course badges, but it's the one you should use to post on social media, at least the one you should emphasize. Uh, let's see. Here's mine. I clicked on it. Um, I need to go find the shareable link. So why don't I, I mean, I could download the certificate, but I don't want that. I want to share it. So I'll click share certificate and right there, it's the copy that you want. You could click Facebook or LinkedIn and it'll automatically go post for you, but you lose control. It'll just post it and it's going to say whatever it's going to say. Whereas if you grab and copy the link, then you have control over what you want to say when you post it. So I generally copy the link. Next, we'll look at what should be posted to LinkedIn and how it should be posted. I happen to have a strong opinion on how to properly post ongoing certifications to LinkedIn. I believe it is best to post a single overarching certificate representing the program or the single or uh, final highest or highest ranking badge in a series, but don't dilute the post by posting all nine badges from IBM. Post one, post a summary, don't dilute your message. So. In this example, I'd gotten an MCSE about a year ago, so I didn't post all the individual exams that it took 
to do the MCSE. I made a note of them over here. I like to emphasize the level of effort by listing out the number of hours I track in 15 minute increments as I'm doing the studying and taking the test. So I knew that it took 106 hours. I want to put that down. Uh, look at the difference. When I took the professional scrum master certificate, that was only 12 hours of studying. A, I had a lot of experience in the past and read books on the subject and worked in the area for many years. And B, it just took 12 hours of prep time, pass the exam, boom, have a certification with a credential ID. But that level of effort compared to three exams at Microsoft or an MCSE, that's a big difference. And if I don't specify that, you have no idea how hard one is relative to the other. And if I were to go take all nine of the courses the badges, they're pretty badges. I'd have a nice little circle badge here from IBM, but it would dilute the message. I would have literally, I have 21 badges out on a claim and dozens of other badges all over the place. So I'd have 30 badges littering this, and it's just too many. Um, and I'll show you in a minute an option, but uh, with, with what to do with those. Now, Scratch what I said, if you only have one or two or three badges and you're just getting started, then by all means, put those badges in. But over time, when you get to an end state, end point certification, put that and delete and remove the other ones. That all said, there is value in posting those individual courses from IBM with the link. That way, resume crawlers, Google, etc., are aware of the details, are aware of the specific course names. Um, but I don't put those in the licenses and certification sections of LinkedIn. No, I scroll down here, down, down, down. And in the accomplishments section, you would think I would put it in courses, but I don't because if I add a course, I can't really do much. There's, I can put a name and a number and an associated with. No, instead what I do is I put it in the test scores. So right now I have 21 test scores representing 21 different badges. And for anyone who really wants to look, they can hit the down arrow and they will get the details and they will get the actual credential that they can go copy. The link doesn't work. That's a bit of a bummer. But they can copy, paste it, hit enter, and it should pop up the badge. So that's how I handle all the details. And then in that way, uh, when it comes time to look for a job or when I want a Google or something, to, a resume crawler to walk through, it'll find these details and it'll recognize, oh, he has data science methodology or Python or et cetera. So I do put the individual scores down here and I don't lose the information because if for whatever reason <clears throat> I decide I wanna move this badge up, at least I have the credentials here on file. So that's optionally what you can do with those details. Oh, I forgot to mention this in my Medium article, but. The third thing that I post on social media is from, for big events, I'll actually go in here, click it, and paste the URL, and I'll type some notes. And it looks something like this right here. So uh, it's not the greatest because you can only post one link, which is a bummer. But I'll post the link, and then I'll post some details about it. Just finish this and talk about how much it costs or how many hours it took, etc. And then if I could post other links up here, I would, but instead I end up having to post down in the comments section that here's my GitHub repo, here's the Coursera link for those interested. Next we'll try to answer the question, are there better certifications available for data science? Sure, there's better sites. Uh, Harvard and MIT both have statistics and data science certificates out on edX. Johns Hopkins University has one on Coursera. There's several excellent Python R and statistics focused certifications for, from Duke University, University of Michigan, and University of Washington all out on Coursera. And there's other large institutions that have it on either on edX, Coursera, or on their own uh, uh, university sites. And I plan on taking many of them. So, uh, we can look at Harvard's, for example, on edX. And I'll, again, post the link to this Medium article so you can go grab these links yourself if you're interested in those courses. The Harvard edX, 800 bucks. That would be very prestigious to have on your resume. It takes, it's self-paced. It says it takes one year, uh, five months, two to three hours a week. What is that, 52 weeks and another 25, 75 weeks times two to three hours, so that'd be 150 to 300 hours. So I would get, it's Harvard though, and it's, I, I don't see it as it, I'm guessing it's intermediate. 
or more difficult. Probability, wrangling, linear regression. Eh, it's similar. It's similar to the IBM one. So maybe this is 150 to 200 hours. So maybe if you just went full bore, it would take three to four weeks to do. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to go look at that one later. But that's a neat one. MIT has one. John Hopkins, that one's on Coursera. I'm probably going to do that one next. Uh, it has 416,000 already enrolled. I think that's even more than the IBM one. So very neat course. And beginner level. Anyway, there's there's lots of neat ones. And the point, though, isn't are these better than the IBM certificate? I don't think figuring out which one's better or worse is, an, is the issue. I think, to me, the objective should be to hit the material from a diverse set of perspectives. And each time you go through the material from a different viewpoint, you learn more and more. Uh, to me, an example is I just spent the last year and graduated with a degree, graduate degree on data science, and yet taking this IBM certification, I still had several excellent takeaways. New ideas, new tools, new techniques from the certification, getting GitHub set up, using the <clears throat> folio for the mapping, using the clustering the way that they did it. That's all new to me, and it's all great. So, and if you think about a data scientist working 2,000 hours a year, I just did 1,200 hours to get a master's. I just did 106 hours on this certification. Obviously, I have hundreds and hundreds of more hours, thousands of hours, to get up to speed and transition. So I'm going to be taking lots of these courses to get my skill set up, to get my portfolio up. Uh, I, I, I'm not a believer in the fake it till you make it stuff. I don't, I don't like that. I think you should know the material really thoroughly and be well versed in it before you transition. So that's what I'm going to do is just grind through all of these different certifications and get the skill set up. So to me, eh. One's not better than the other. They're all great. They're all worthwhile. Uh, anything else I want to mention on that? Yeah. If you're completely new to the field, then it probably does matter. You probably don't want to start with some of the harder ones. You probably don't even want to start with the IBM one. You may want to start with some of the smaller taking onesie twosie classes and then work your way up. So that's probably the best way to look at these courses is they're different levels of difficulty, different levels of prestige, but they're all excellent. Just figure out what's the proper order for you and which to take them. And finally, I'm going to double up here and discuss pretty briefly how the material has stood up over time over the past few years since it was generated for the course, and then a conclusion. So how has the material stood up? Has it aged out since it's three years old? Well, the answer is a mix of good and bad. I'm not going to belabor the point, but in general, it's fine. The core concepts, they're all building blocks of data science. They've held up fine, and they'll continue to do so for a long time to come. The course will be great. That said, with most technology-specific how-tos and detailed description guides, as the underlying software, in this case, uh, we use the IBM Watson a lot, it changed, and some of the instructions aren't accurate. And yeah, it can be a little bit frustrating at times. I think in total, out of 106 hours, about two hours I lost on three different occasions, waiting for things that weren't working and researching them, then finding a workaround. And I noticed folks had complaints. The bottom line here is that a former professor of mine once was asked, why is the documentation so sparse and some of the labs outdated and broken? That makes things much more difficult and time consuming than it otherwise could be. Yeah, that's you know a, a valid point, but his response was fantastic and it stuck with me. He said, this is a graduate level course. Your job is not just to find the answers, but it's also to figure out the right questions to get the best answers. So that really stuck with me and resonated. It's, it's frustrating, but you know what? That's life. I toss this in down here. In the real world, you're paid to solve problems. You're not paid to complain about them. <laughs> you just, lots of other students have figured out how to complete the course. There's a few little hiccups because the material's getting dated and instructions aren't accurate and they haven't been updated, but it's okay. The work world is like that in spades and it's just part of the process. You just have to work through it. So in conclusion, this certificate is well worth the time, effort, and minimal cost and I highly recommend it if you're on a path to becoming a data scientist. And uh, so thanks, I hope this video was helpful and if it was, great. You can hit me up on LinkedIn or uh, subscribe to this channel. Thanks. Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and be sure to subscribe below.